During a recent appearance on BBC Radio 1, Tool vocalist Maynard James Keenan singled out a string of albums that influenced him the most as an artist. Let's take a look at the rundown with Keenan's commentary. Joni Mitchell, Blue. That was my aunt. She sees me going on this spiral of Kiss and Black Sabbath and she goes, hang on, check this out. I don't know how she managed to express all of this in a short, concise period of time to a kid who was watching monster movies on Saturday, but she was actually able to convey to me, here's a person who's a woman fighting this uphill struggle in arguably a man's rock world. So that sunk in right away from me. Even as young as I was, that made sense, like, oh, this is somebody who is going against the grain, in a way. Black Sabbath? Black Sabbath. That was the moment when I was watching All Jacked Up on Sugar at Grandma's House, because on Saturdays, you'd have all those monster movies. I think that's when my aunt came up and was like, oh, you gotta check this out. If you're gonna watch vampire movies, check out this soundtrack. And it was Black Sabbath. Pretty amazing. So I just had that. I would just turn the sound down on the TV and just listen to the album watching the monster movies. Devo. Q. Are we not men? Are we Devo? Out of left field to approach them, just making an attempt to destroy classic rock with their melodies and their approaches. If you listen to some of those early albums, most of them are, in, in my opinion, and I'm not a lawyer, all of those early songs seem like they're direct ripoffs of classic rock songs, just sped up and quirked out. So, you listen to them, it's like them trying to stiffen up classic rock into this weird, digital, quirky nature. I just love that. Again, it took me outside of my conventional understandings of music as it goes. And then after Black Sabbath and all those other things, you're still getting back into those kind of song-structured things. Foreigner and Bob Seger, and then all of a sudden Devo comes along and you go, Whoa, what is this? And then you play it for your friends and they just go, I don't understand you. Lo, things we lost in the fire. The restraint and the patience. I have a lot of friends over the years, all my projects, I'm always the guy going, if we slow this down, it could be such an intense thing. Because understanding the patience that Pink Floyd has when they're not playing the note yet, just waiting till this thing finishes up its emotional cycle before we play the next note, that discipline is so difficult for musicians because they're looking for the payoff right away. So in the album, Things We Lost in the Fire, there's so much patience and restraint. Just as the patience between notes and hits, there's a gorgeous display of, no, there's a bigger picture here. We're creating a mood. Every project I've been in, whenever I suggest we get that slow, it's almost like panic. It's hard for them to really dig in. Everyone wants to speed it up. This last album, it was like, turn up the tempo, turn up the tempo. It's like, I think you are missing something here. I think you're missing an opportunity to really draw someone in, almost like hypnotism. Maynard also singled out Pink Floyd animals and swans, greedy, holy money as major influences without really offering any additional commentary. Thanks for watching. And if you want more music news, just subscribe to Ultimate Guitar TV and press that little bell to get notifications.